in Scotland and the UK as a whole, we enjoy an oceanic climate. That Gulf Stream means that we're protected from the worst of the cold. We know we have a climate that can help us have extremely good crops, but that stability is changing. Scotland is a brand, particularly around whisky. That brand only survives on the basis of the fact we, we are continuing to nurture our environment. Half of the fertilizer that we apply to barley is lost. It simply doesn't make its way into the crop. When you look at a crop like peas, peas return to the system. They give something back. Years and years ago, it was all about farm-based distilleries. People used to take their crops and turn that into whiskey. And therefore, there was always that association with whiskey and what was grown in the farm. It creates that direct link to the soil. Distilleries used to always be about that local environment, the barley that was grown there, that has definitely been lost. And then I don't think people realize when they're drinking a particular spirit, you know, 90% is the barley or the grain that produced that. I mean, it is important to know where that's coming from. But we've got a general awareness, I think, around the distilling community that we need to be doing more in terms of being more sustainable. We're not getting the colder winters, we're getting more rain. Suddenly people thought, what's going on here? The seasons are merging and that influences the crops. We need to reset our distilling in Scotland. I originally trained as a plant scientist. I grew up on the farm. So I find that wild plants and Scottish plants really fascinating that they're hiding all these secret flavors and aromas inside them. To then capture that into a liquid and spirit. So it looks like water almost, quite unassuming, clear. But then when you taste it, it can capture either the raw material or any plants that you add into it. It's pretty special. Most distilleries, their process or their production and what they can talk about is at their door when they receive in their raw materials. But we start right in the soil. The initial idea behind the distillery was to make more out of what we now call wonky veg. So there's a whole load of potatoes that the farm grow that aren't that perfect round potato that the supermarkets want. They still take as much effort and inputs to grow. So we wanted to make more out of them. The farm determines everything we can make. So when we want to make a product, we first have to decide and figure out how we can grow it here. And also when we make things. We make potato vodka straight after harvest because potatoes don't store all year round. The single malt has to wait. You have to let barley wait a while before it can be malted. Rise after harvest. We would rather adjust our processes to make it still work rather than waste a almost perfectly good raw material. It starts with our environment, what we've planted, it's how we till, it's, it's what went on before in the rotation, but we are unquestionably on a journey because we're still a commercial farm. So if we want to do everything we needed to do for the environment tomorrow, we would be out of business. We're better than we were five years ago. We're much better than we were 10 years ago, but we still use probably too much chemical. There's been an awful lot of work, I think, making alcohol production sustainable within processes in the distillery. I don't believe the same advancements have been made in that space between the field and the distillery gate, because that is actually where most of the greenhouse gas emissions are.
crop rotations in Scotland can be characterised in a particular way, which is barley, barley, something else. So two thirds of what we grow is, is barley, half of that is for animal feed, and the other half is for the drinks industry. Economically, it's extremely important to the UK and to Scotland. But the, the cost of our food or drinks does not reflect the environmental costs of that production. You cannot have a system that you're continually removing from. Farmers have to deal with the weather and they like consistency. Fertilizers and pesticides, that control allows you to cope with those other uncertainties. These are not natural remedies or natural solutions or natural approaches to growing those crops. Supermarkets looking for cheaper food, that has driven down the price that the farmers have received. The easy way for the farmer to survive is not to rotate and actually use more artificial fertiliser and chemicals. As farmers were guardians of the soil, guardians of the environment, that goes out the window. It becomes a survival game. I feel a lot of pressure at times is being placed on farmers to change, a incredible amount of pressure on farmers. But if you're wanting to change, you know, Scotland in a large way, immediately these larger players would have to step up. Particularly with the larger distillers, they can influence that, to pay the farmer proper price to allow them to farm in a better way. Farmers are contract growing for distilleries. All those details of numbers that they want each grain to have, they could build in some kind of carbon footprint to the specification or something, you know, if they really wanted it. A legume is defined, it's defining character, is the fact that it can fix nitrogen from the air. So it needs no synthetic or what we call mineral nitrogen fertilizer. That's a particular greenhouse gas cost, of course, that can be avoided. And the crops we're talking about mainly are peas and beans. You can see the, these little bumps on the roots. These are legume root nodules. And within these are the bacteria. They can make their own biologically useful nitrogen from, uh, from the air. In Scotland, peas are a great legume for a crop rotation. Peas don't need any synthetic nitrogen fertiliser. And then once you harvest those peas, you have residues that are left in field. Now those residues are also nitrogen rich. In some cases, the crop following peas doesn't even need any nitrogen at all. The alcohol industries, and that's beer and spirit production, they are fed by crops that are not nitrogen fixing. Could those same products be achieved with a diversity of raw materials? Barley and wheat, they're pretty nitrogen hungry. Why aren't we just making alcohol out of the peas and beans? Most people associate vodka with potatoes and, you know, beer and whiskey with cereals. Like that's, I think people can make that association, but I don't think anyone saw peas coming. So with any raw material, it's about what's going on inside it. So it doesn't really matter if it's a pea or a grain of wheat. The main two components are protein and starch, and it's the starch that distillers or brewers or anyone making alcohol is interested in. And the conditions needed to get it out, break it down, and allow it to be fermented. It's one thing to have an idea, and it's one thing to trial it out in the lab. But ultimately, you need a business to take that risk and turn it into something commercial. I remember Kirsty talking about her PhD making great headway, and we're going, we could definitely utilize this in the distillery because it's fundamentally what we're all about. No one had ever done a spirit like this before. Initially it started as a, we'll just try it one day. Um, never thinking we'll release a product, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. See, we didn't really tell people what we're up to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in the lab, it's the same processes you'll see in a full-scale distillery, but it's on a very small scale. So, you know, you're weighing out a few grams of peas rather than tons. 
So to make any spirit, you're taking your raw material, mixing it with water, hitting certain temperatures, and the goal here is to get the starch out. So starch is a huge chain sugar, um, which is too big for yeast to eat. So when mashing, you're extracting the starch, zymes that are there naturally are breaking it down into small sugars. That liquid, which is now sweet to the taste, goes to fermentation. And here you add yeast, and yeast basically eats up sugar and produces carbon dioxide and alcohol. Turn it into actual spirit, you start distilling it. So distilling really is a separation and concentration process. So the more steps you do, you can get a purer and more uh, neutral spirit. You've got your like starting point to make your vodka and your gin. So at the lab scale, you're kind of working under as well optimum conditions. You can really control temperature, times and everything. It works successfully there, but then there's the question when you bring it to commercial reality, there's still some unknowns. We didn't know if it would work, but we wanted to take that risk. We knew it has got the potential to change the way spirits are made. Scottish scientists are claiming a world first, a climate positive gin. That is, it prevents more greenhouse gas emissions than it creates. And its key ingredient, the humble garden pea. Like the initial reaction, all the questions were like, does it taste of peas? Does it like it does it? No, you know, fundamentally, the first step you do is to make a neutral spirit. But I hope now that we're past those kind of things that people, especially within the industry, see and start thinking about doing things differently. Producing a litre of spirit from peas versus wheat, you save 2.2 kilograms of CO2 emissions. You know, if we swapped out, you know, a very small percent of wheat neutral spirit with pea neutral spirit, it could have a big impact on the industry and our environments. When Abiki started this project, they had very little dash no peas on the farm, whereas now they're looking at 20% pea cover, which is just a perfect amount as far as I'm concerned. We did our, our first ever trial of intercropping, taking one of our staple crops, barley, but then sowing at the same time with peas, and then the barley naturally took nitrogen out of the soil and allowed us to produce this dual crop. What we have done is use an already successful industry. We've put in this new material, peas, and we've used that to make a new spirit, but also it's a way of, of isolating protein. At the moment, the UK imports in the region of 80% of its protein. All the methods Kirsty has developed have been published and they're available open access. So I can't see where the doubts are. Distilling industry is a very old traditional industry. We don't have any predefined rules of how a distillery should be run. It's a new distillery, new way of thinking. We don't answer to anyone else, you know. When we want to try something, and we do it. Nadar has set the standard on how you can produce a climate positive spirit. We hope it's replicated. We hope that people look at it and go, actually, that's very clever. We'll be gone tomorrow. Our natural environment will still be there. You've got to look at everything you do and just think, can we do this better? Do we use less artificial nitrogen? Of course you can. Do you use less plastic? Of course you can. You can take these small steps. If enough people do that, it will make a huge difference.